World War II era Finland was all over the shop. First, she was fighting against the pre-Allied Power USSR, then against the Allied Power USSR with the Germans, and then against the Germans. No doubt you've heard of open relationship Finland before, though much of the focus tends to be on the Winter War, in which the Finns first fought the Soviets. In this video, we're going to shed a little light on Finnish and German World War II era relations instead. Now, we do have to talk a little about the Winter War, as this is what put Finland on her back foot and turned her head toward Germany. Long story short, Josef Stalin threw as many as 760,000 Red Army soldiers at Finland in the hopes of stealing a whole chunk of her territory, which bordered the USSR. Stalin ultimately got what he wanted, and some, but this came at a high price. Around 381,000 Soviets became casualties of the Winter War, in exchange for Finnish casualties of 70,000, and the Soviet Union's friendly Bolshevik reputation was deeply tarnished. As one unnamed Red Army general put it, we've won just about enough to bury our dead. Black and blue, the Finns knew the peace which followed their concession of Finnish territory to the Soviets would be brief, and they also knew they hadn't the steam to fight the Soviets all over again when the war inevitably continued. So, in the lead up to the German invasion of the USSR, the Finns forged a naughty relationship with the Germans and were grateful for all the guns and fuel and Aldi hampers the Germans offered them. In return, the Germans gained a springboard from which they could launch their assault on northern Russia, as well as valuable shipping waters, among other things. When the ashes of the Winter War turned once more to flames, the Finns were backed by the Wehrmacht, and they went on the offensive, at least for a little while. From the 25th of June 1941, the so-called Continuation War raged for just under three years and three months. In this time, the Finns sustained 225,000 casualties, the Germans 84,000, and the Soviets as many as 944,000. Though, it was only in the first several months of this war that the Finns pushed back the Soviet lines. After they reclaimed the territory they lost in the Winter War and taken a sneaky bit extra, namely East Karelia, they dug in and the Continuation War devolved into a period of trench and unconventional warfare, which lasted until the Viborg Petrodavosk Offensive. It wasn't all beers and Bratwurst in combined Finnish and German operations, however. In Operation Silverfox, for example, the Finns and Germans sought to take the port of Murmansk from the Soviets, and this turned out to be an expensive failure. The Germans were ill-prepared for the Arctic fighting which ensued, sustaining more than 21,500 casualties, while the Finns took only around a quarter as many. This likely made the Germans question just what they were doing all the way up there in the cold while Operation Barbarossa was, in effect, in the heart of the USSR. Additionally, the Finns weren't all that keen to enter Hitler's call and lay waste to the Russian city of Leningrad, or at least, they would have done a good job hiding it. While the Finnish lines certainly closed Leningrad off from the north, Finland's cooperation with Germany's two-year and four-month siege on the city is debatable. Some historians believe Finland supported Germany's starvation of the city, while others believe the Finns simply held their defensive lines. The excellently moustached Finnish commander-in-chief, Baron Mannerheim, however, said that Leningrad was not their goal and that they should not take part in it, much to the displeasure of Hitler. After Operation Barbarossa hit a wall, the Soviets aimed over 450,000 soldiers, 10,500 artillery pieces, 800 tanks, and 1,600 aircraft at Finland, itching to take back the land they had been playing tug-of-war over for years and knock Finland out of the war. This offensive was aforementioned Viborg Petrodavosk Offensive or Karelian Offensive, and while the Finnish defenders predicted they would be unable to stave the Soviets off for more than a matter of months, Finnish President Risto Reiti told Germany that Finland would fight alongside Germany to the bitter end, so the Germans kept up the Aldi hampers. Unfortunately for the Finnish President, he was discarded and subsequently replaced by Mustachio Mannerheim, who negotiated for peace with the Soviets in the Moscow Armistice. As part of this, Mannerheim agreed to eject the Germans from his country. As it turned out, however, the Germans weren't too hot on leaving Finland. 
whose soldiers they had come to know as their brothers in arms. What ensued was the Lapland War. At the start, the Germans withdrew relatively peacefully, but then the Soviets turned up the pressure, forcing the Finns to chase the Germans out with their tails between their legs. Between the 15th of September 1944 and the 27th of April 1945, the Finns sustained more than 3,900 casualties ejecting their former allies with violence, killing or wounding around 3,000 Germans and taking a further 1,300 prisoners of war. Much of this conflict took part in the Lapland region of northern Finland, where the Germans employed scorched earth and landmine strategies to delay their Finnish pursuers. All in all, they destroyed 14,900 buildings, accounting for between 40 and 46% of the region's property and set at least 1.142 million mines, cartridges and other explosives. Bear in mind, this number accounted for just the explosives the Finns found and demined over the next few decades. Talk about leaving a place better than how you found it. While we've covered the winter continuation and Lapland Wars, we haven't yet paid any attention to Finland's participation in German war crimes and atrocities. Just to be clear, Finland had nothing on Romania, but some Finns got up to some questionable stuff throughout their alliance with the Germans. Just last year, the Finnish government commissioned the National Archives of Finland to produce an investigative report on over 1,400 Finns who served under the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking between 1941 and 1943. These men, while supposedly unsympathetic to Nazi ideology, were volunteered and assigned to the SS division in an effort to appease Heiner Himmler, who had demanded the same of some of Germany's other allies. The Viking division took part in Operation Barbarossa and the Finnish National Archive Director General said, It is very likely that the Finnish volunteers participated in the killing of Jews, other civilians and prisoners of war as part of the German SS troops. One of such men was the infamous Lauri Torni, who fought not only in the Finnish Volunteer Battalion, but also the Finnish Army and the SS throughout the war and for the Americans in the Vietnam War after that, all because he had an intense hatred for communism. An interesting story in itself. While this isn't quite on the same scale, the Finns also turned over 2,916 Soviet POWs to the Germans in exchange for 2,714 Finnish POWs the Germans had been holding. While around 2,000 of the Soviet POWs ended up fighting for the Germans in the Russian Liberation Army, the rest likely yielded to the terrible conditions and violence of Nazi concentration camps. Lastly, the Finns also let the Germans hold Soviet POWs in Finland, where they undertook forced labor. The Finns held Soviet POWs too, and interestingly, Soviet death rates in German camps in Finland were around 20%, while Soviet death rates in Finnish camps were around 10% higher. What we must acknowledge is that Finland never signed on as an Axis power, and it also managed to keep its armed forces from falling under the German command structure. Despite this, Finland was deemed an ally of Nazi Germany at the end of the war. Heavy war reparations were imposed upon the nation, and an area near its capital city, Helsinki, remained under Soviet control until 1956, before which time-industrious old Finland had already paid off its monetary debts. What's also interesting is that there was never an official peace agreement between Finland and Germany. It just sort of fizzled out. But what do you think? Were you aware of Finland and Germany's romantic relationship before this? Do you think Finland allying with Germany in the first place was a reasonable thing to do? Let us know in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, make sure you check out some of the links in the description below, including our Relax Jack music channel where you can check out the songs we use in our videos unobstructed, our Patreon where you get access to an exclusive video per month if you decide to donate, and our wider history community on our Discord where you can chat to myself and other history buffs. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.